I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his gates with praise. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you guys for calling in. Praise God. Praise God. Um, Lord, Holy Ghost. If you're on the line, go ahead and share um, the link. Praise God. Praise God. How you doing today? Praise God. How you guys doing today? I want you to go ahead and share the link so we can begin soon. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Yes, I will enter his court with praise. Hallelujah. I want you guys to go ahead and share the link. Welcome, welcome to Periscope. Uh, praise the Lord. We'll be starting shortly. Um, we're going to give it time for people to call in. Hallelujah. Once you share the link, God bless you for sharing the link. Uh, I want you to take time and invite people um, that's on your group me, your various group me's, for those who have group me's, um, for those who use social media. Why don't you go ahead and share that link um, on your Twitter? I believe that, you know, Periscope is uh, uh, interwoven. Uh, um, with with Twitter, so I want you to go ahead and share that on that application, and why don't you also go ahead and share it on your Facebook um, or whatever social media you use, Instagram as well. I don't know how that work out. <laughs> Praise God, maybe you can post a picture, a screenshot, and then you can go ahead and put the link in the um, in the comment box or whatever you have to do. But I believe that the spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon this Periscope line. Why is that? Um, the Bible says, simply put, that when two or three are gathered in his name, that he is there, that he is amiss. So I just want you to go ahead and share the link that Jesus Christ has a word for you. Praise God. I believe that Jesus Christ has a word for you. And not only for you, but unto those who call in on this line. And so why don't you give people the opportunity to hear the word of the Lord um, that will be shared thus forth. And for those that are on the line, I want you to just go ahead and, um, yeah, tell me how your day was. Praise God. So I normally start off with a question. Um, the question of today's Periscope I'm going to ask is, um, what are you thankful for? Praise God. I know we hear that uh, question a lot, a lot during Thanksgiving season, right? During Thanksgiving time, we always hear, what are you thankful for? You'll see we post many uh, uh, pictures asking, what are we thankful for? Um, but we're actually supposed to be very, very thankful in every day of our life and not just one particular season. So I want to start off by asking you um, if there's if there's one thing that you know that you have been uh, that you are thankful for from the bottom of your heart. Genuinely, um, I want you to go ahead and type that on the comment box. If you can go ahead and share. What are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? If God himself was to show up in the room of where you are. If God himself was to appear before you, amen. You're thankful for freedom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. You're thankful for freedom. Someone say freedom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You're thankful for freedom. Freedom is very beautiful because I tell you the truth. When you're in bondage, all you desire is freedom. You know, all you desire is for chains to be broken. All you desire is for you to be set free. Praise God. And then now freedom has come. Liberation has came and you can rejoice. Uh, it's, it's funny. A lot of foreigners come to America. Why? Because this is the home of the what? Free. Praise God. Where there's freedom, you know, that's where happiness begins to abound the more. So praise God for that. Um, um, that's, that's something to be very, very thankful for. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Freedom. Freedom. Both spiritually and physically. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that's that's very true. Both physically and spiritually, you are in freedom. Amen. I, that reminds me of a scripture in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. It says, For freedom's sake, Christ has set you free. Can you that verse is so powerful? Sometimes, you know, I read the scriptures, and I know you often do it as well, where you read it, and then it's so powerful, but you just overlook it. 
praise God, but then the Holy Spirit illuminates it within the very content of your life. And then you see its application. And then you go back to the verse and you're like, wow, this verse was actually very, very powerful. And when my sister said that she is thankful for freedom, it actually reminded me of Galatians chapter five, verse one. It says it is for freedom's sake that Christ has set us free. It says it is for freedom's sake that Christ himself has set it as free. I love that verse. It is a very, very powerful, potent verse. It says because Jesus Christ, who experienced freedom, says that for the sake of freedom, he has given it to those who are in bondage. Praise God. It says that I want you to understand that concept because a lot of time we're in bondage. But the reason why we're in bondage is because we ourselves have we have no power to be free. Are you following me? Are you following me? Is that when you're in bondage, right? When you're in bondage, no one wants to be in bondage. No one ever wants to be entangled. Praise God. No one wants to be in a strange jacket. You understand? But the reason why you're in bondage is because of the very simple fact that what? You are weak in and of yourself to be free. But the Bible says in Galatians chapter five, verse one, it says for freedom's sake, Christ has set you free. See, God has experienced freedom and because he is living and abounding in the freedom of the Holy Spirit, what begins to happen is he wants everyone to feel that experience. And so he says, for freedom's sake, Christ has set you free. Praise God. Thank you, sis, for sharing that. That is very encouraging. Um, and the Bible says that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And I believe that freedom is going to occur on this line in this short amount of time that we do have together. So thank you, sis, for for being bold to share that um, amazing testimony, really. So I, I ask the question for those who are joining. We say welcome. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and I greet you on behalf of the ministry and to whom I'm representing. That is Bethel Campus Fellowship. Praise God. And, and the question I asked was, um, while we're waiting, we're still waiting for a couple of people to join on. The question I asked is simply this. What are you thankful for? Praise God. I know we hear that a lot during the Thanksgiving holiday season. But the very thing is, is that God desires that every man has a thankful heart before him. And so we're going to exercise that. We're going to exercise our mind a little bit as we're waiting for people to venture to call in. I want to ask you, what are you thankful for? Go ahead and post it in the comment box so that we can uh, uh, be blessed. Really, what are you thankful for? You yourself. If God himself was to appear to your room and ask you, sis, what are you thankful for? What is that that you will communicate to God? If God was to appear in the car, the, 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 the passenger seat of your car, and he was asking you, bro, what are you thankful for? What are you going to communicate to God? Why don't you go ahead and share that? Praise God. Why don't you go ahead and share that so that people may be encouraged? It says, I am thankful that God has given me the ability and privilege to repent always. Hallelujah. It says, thankful for revelation regarding self. Praise God. I like those two aspects that God has enabled you. Someone said enablement. I really like that, bro, that you posted that, that God has enabled you to repent. I tell you the truth. I'm going to read a scripture for you guys. But the reason why we're able to repent is not based on the strength of ourselves, but it's based on the person of the Holy Ghost. It says freedom to read the word, face persecution for the word's sake. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, that's my word. Glory to God. When I see that someone is thankful for persecution, praise God. I want to read a scripture. The Holy Ghost is on this line, guys. Let's just thank the name of the Lord. You see, I want to encourage you guys that when you're thankful, what begins to happen is that the Holy Ghost will move like never before. And so I want you to go ahead and share the, I want you to share this link, share this link really quickly so that we can begin. And I'm going to address some of the things that people posted regarding thankfulness. I want you to share the link really quickly so that others may be encouraged in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Someone said that they are thankful for the ability, the ability. I like that word for the ability to repent always in consistent repentance. I tell you the truth. It takes God himself. It takes God himself to repent unto God. I hope you guys are following me because God, the Bible says that no one can come to the father unless what the father draws him in. Hallelujah. Are you guys following me? It says that no one can come to Jesus Christ unless Christ, the Holy Spirit himself, draws that person in. If you are saved on this line, it wasn't because you woke up the morning, this, the morning that you got saved and say, well, 
I'm going to decide this Jesus thing. No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It was by divine appointment that you are repented of your sins. And it is by divine enablement that you are able to say yes to the call of salvation. And so I believe that that is something to be very thankful for. That you, that God himself, right? The God of this universe. I was thinking about it not too long ago. I was thinking about it, that the God of this universe who created the heavens and the earth, that the handiwork of Jesus Christ is found in the stars and the galaxies, yet he still decided to save us. Are you following me? An elephant in all of his splendor, a giraffe in all of his majesty testifies to the goodness of God. But yet we mere men, we mere men, you understand? We mere men. That God himself seen something inside of us. The psalmist David says, who is, who is man that you are mindful of? And so it is a good thing. It is a privilege and an honor that God thought that we were worth, that God himself thought that we were worth keeping. God thought that we were worth a uh, 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 saving. So he came and rescued us. So hallelujah for that um, amazing testimony about thankfulness. Someone said also too that they're thankful that they can read the word. And that, that, that they're thankful that the word is clear to them. And that they can suffer persecution. I want to read you a scripture, right? And then we're going to go ahead and begin. I want those. If you want to have the opportunity, praise God. If you want to have the opportunity to share exactly what you're thankful for, I want you to go ahead and share. And as you're typing these things up, right, I want to let you know that the devil is, uh, is a liar. Praise God. The devil wants you to be distracted because where the spirit of the Lord is, I tell you that the devil is always lingering, seeing some looking. The Bible says that he is like a like a lion, right? Prying, rowling, uh, 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 roaming around looking for whom to devour, looking for whom to devour. And so as we're in the presence of the Lord, as the word of God is being brought forth to our very souls, what begins to happen is that the devil, right? The devil wants to begin to captivate or he wants to lay hold of that opportunity to take some or, or to snatch the seed. Mark chapter four talks about snatch the seed from very good soil. And so I believe that this is the time where we have to hear intensively that we may receive a measure of faith. Praise God. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. And so the, the, the measure of faith that is a lot or given to me is determined based upon my attentiveness to that which is being spoken concerning the word of the Lord. I don't want I don't want to lose you in what I'm saying here. I want you to follow me. It's very, very clear. It says that by faith. Right. It says that the uh, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. It said it is by hearing that a man receives faith. It is not about the 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 the. the the, the quality of the preacher is not about even the content of the word, but it's simply about the person that intently listens to the voice of God through the word of God, through the mouth of mortal man. You following me? And so the more intently and the more focused you are in the word of God, the more uh, uh, faith will be allotted on your account. And so I charge you um, to be very, very um, um, sober as we go ahead and venture on. I want you to share the link. Uh, I want to share a verse I want to open up in a verse in Isaiah 55. Let's turn to Isaiah 55. That's where we're going to begin. Um, the person that was supposed to speak today um, couldn't make it. So uh, I was called upon as to be a substitute. And I believe that the spirit of the Lord that rests um, upon the person that was supposed to teach because they prepared will also rest upon me who answer the vocation of the Lord. And so um, I want to read a verse in Isaiah 55, and we're going to open up in prayer, and we're going to simply begin. I'm, I'm going to spend 15 minutes, and um, the topic that we're talking about is being thankful, right? It is the importance of thankfulness and the importance of uh, your testimony. The importance of thankfulness and the importance of testimony. These two things are very, very essential in Christian living. Praise God. That is what we're addressing here today. The practicality of Christian living. And so turn with me. I invite you guys to turn with me to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55. I want to read a verse that is very, very common that we hear a lot. But by the grace of God, by the enabling of the Holy Spirit, revelation will come concerning this verse that will give us a new profound outlook on this verse. And it will really enable us by the grace of God to have an attitude of testimony and thanksgiving. 
So I want you to read with me to Isaiah 50, or read with me, excuse me, uh, to Isaiah 55. Verse, um, we're going to start from verse 10, verse 10. So I'm going to go ahead and read. Amen. It says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, it says, and do not turn to it without, someone say without watering the earth. It says, and making it bud and flourish. It says, so that it yields seeds for the sower and bread for the eater. I'm going to read that verse again. And I want you to focus on the word without. Someone say without. I want you to go ahead and type that. Without. Just like, praise God, if I was preaching um, in, in, in the physical, in physical, in the physical, <laughs> if I was in front of you guys, I would ask you guys to recite without so that your memory can, you know, um, it can really drop in your memory. It says, starting from verse 10, it says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, it says, and do not return without, without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish. It says, so that it yields seed to the sower and bread to the eater. It says, verse 11. It says, so is my word. Someone say word that goes out from my mouth. It says it will not return to me empty. It will not return. Someone say return to me empty. It says, but will accomplish what I, the Lord, desire. It says, and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Praise God. So let us pray and look to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, in this 15 minute time frame, Lord, I ask that you will release the kingdom of heaven. Yes, Lord, I say release the kingdom of heaven even now, O oh God. Lord, you are the God who name is O Lemuel. You are the God who move outside of time. Time is not a factor to you. Father, for you are able to, 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 to preach a, a, a message within 15 minutes, O oh God. The Holy Spirit is able to, to, to use 15 minutes to that of a lifetime, oh God. So, Lord, I pray that a, a, a time of impactfulness shall come in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that they, oh God, that are on this line or those that will listen to the recording, Lord, that they will listen intently to the word of God and not myself. Lord, because you said measure, the measure of faith is found in the depth of the, uh, of that person, of the recipient of the word of God, that the depth of faith is found in the intensive listening in the, in the intense listening of the recipient of the word of God. And so, Lord, I simply believe God that it's not anything to do about me, but it's all to do about you. So, Lord, I ask that you will use my mind. Lord, that you will use my, my body and my soul. Lord, you will use my emotions and my mental faculties and notions, oh God, to convey the very heart of the Lord. Father, your word says in Luke chapter 12, verse 32, you say, dear little children, I de you say, do not be afraid for I, the Lord, I, the Lord delight to give you the kingdom. And so, Lord, I believe that the kingdom of God will be released on this Periscope line. So, Lord, I say, bring the harvest. Lord, I say, bring the harvest because it's not about the message. Oh, God, you have already supplied the message. Now, Lord, I say, bring the people, God, that they may hear the very word of the soul that is able, oh, God, to shift, to bring a transformative difference in their walk with you. Oh, God, Lord, I believe by faith that signs, miracles and wonders shall accompany those that will practice and live out a life of thankfulness. Oh, God, and a willing obedience to share their testimony. Holy Ghost. So, Father, we say that the spirit of the sovereign Lord shall rest upon this line, the spirit of clarity, the spirit of wisdom and revelation will rest upon us that we may know you better. Lord, enable me, Father, to be able to convey the very words that you have placed upon my heart from time past, that the people may be edified, matured and equipped for every good work. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to quickly read. I'll, I'll be done by 645 by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so I want to start off by saying this, right? It says, let's go back to Isaiah uh, uh, 55 verse 10. Very, very common passage. It says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, it says, and do not return to it without watering the earth. So I want to stop there. Jesus Christ make, very, make, make clear through the mouth of Isaiah something very, very significant. 
For those that are, are, are in bi biology, I believe you will understand the concept of precipitation. Praise God, you will understand how precipitation works in its, in its context, in its nature. And one thing about precipitation that is funny enough is that rain comes down from heaven, but we all know that it precipitates, right? It's like a circle, uh, uh, it's like a circle or a, 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 um, a ecosystem circle, if you will. Um, and, and what begins to happen is that now it, um, from the oceans, right, from the body of waters, from the rivers and all these things, what begins to happen is that the oxygen or, or some form of um, um, water in a different form begins to go back into the sky. Um, praise God. And it's interesting enough how God in his loving kindness displays this. He says, as rain, it says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, right, and do not return to it without without watering the earth. I want to stop there because I want you to understand something significant. When you read this at first glance, you'll be like, okay, you know, that makes sense. Like it, it, it makes all the sense in the world. Rain, when it comes down, it comes down, right? But we know scientists know that, 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 rain, that, that, that it circulates. And then you begin to ask yourself, well, well, technically speaking, you know, it, it actually comes back. And so a lot of times when you read this verse at first glance, you're like, okay, the rain comes down and that's it. Rain come down and that's it. But what God says is that very, very significant word that a lot of times we don't pick up. And that's why every single word in the word of God is very, very important because you understand its context and its totality. It says that it does not return back into the sky without accomplishing, right? Without accomplishing, without giving uh, uh, supplies unto the face of the earth. And so God is making it very clear, you know, and, and that's one thing I like about science. I'm not a scientist, um, and I'm far from that, but I, uh, did happen to listen in class in high school and college and all these other things. And one thing that science does is it tries to define what God has already implemented in heaven. Praise the Lord. And so scientists are not originators, but they, they actually just receive the, these things from the, from the word of God. That's just simply how it is. So let, let not science fool you or let not science fool you. Everything gives glory to God. Everything. Everything gives glory to God. But it says that rain comes down from heaven, right? And it, it doesn't go out without, without. So that word without shows that it actually does go back. But it says that word without says, and it points to the statement before it that it actually returns back. I want you to follow along with me. It says rain goes forth, snows go out, and it says it does not return without, or we can switch it up for, for people that, that, that may, that, that, that need better understanding in the word of God. We can switch without with rather, you know, um, and what do I mean by rather? It means simply this, that the rain go forth, and as it go forth, it will not return until it accomplished that which it was intended purpose for it to do, which is to water the earth and to nourish the land. And that's very, very significant. Why is that? Let's continue to read. It says, and make it bud and flourish. It says, so that it yields seeds for the sower and bread for the eater. It says, so is my word that goes out of my mouth. It says, it will not return to me empty. I want you to understand that if you can highlight it. It says, it will not return to me empty. So at first glance, it almost may seem like, okay, God's word will go out and it will never return back unto him. That's not what God is saying. And a lot of times that's where we get out. That's where we think that that's the interpretation of that verse. You know, it's funny because I was looking at this verse uh, a couple of days ago or not too long ago. And as I was rereading it, the Holy Spirit just magnified the, the, this, this verse, dropped the, dropped the ram of word in my spirit. It's, it, it says that, look, it says this, it says that God word will go forth and it will accomplish what it please. And then it will return back unto him. It says God word will go forth, right? It says, so is my word that go forth from my mouth. It will not return. It will not return unto me empty. So he's saying that my word is going to return and is, but it's not going to return to me empty. It says, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I've sent it. So God word is an agent. God word is an agent. Where are we reading from? Isaiah 55 verse 10 and, 10 and 11. Isaiah 55 verse 10 and 11. God word is sent forth and we are called to be his agents. Praise God. Those that are saved are now agents of the kingdom of heaven. I want you to say, I am an agent of the kingdom of heaven. I am an agent of the 
kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says that God word comes down from heaven and is now resting upon his people and his people carry it out. And once his people carry it out, what begins to happen is that people will acknowledge these things. People will observe these things. And when they observe it, testimony will occur. And that testimony is actually the very word that God has spoken from the beginning. Praise God. I hope you're following along because it's so beautiful. It's like, like I said, with rain and precipitation, it is a circle. So too, God word is a circle. You see, God sends forth from heaven. He uses us, the agents of the kingdom of heaven to manifest that word. And now the people, the people that are around us are going to see these very things and they're going to bear testimony. And when they bear testimony about the goodness of the Lord, that is actually returning to God, the very word that comes with power and authority. Are you following me? So you say, Sam, how does this make sense? We're going to look at John chapter four, verse 10, and I'm going to work a little bit backwards. We're going to start off with testimony and then we're going to end with Thanksgiving. I want you to turn to John chapter four, verse 10. I want to accomplish or I want to excuse me. I want to illustrate exactly what I'm saying that God, I want you to write this down. God will send his word forth. He will use us who are born again believers to manifest his word. And now what begins to happen is that those that observe his word will give testimony about the hand of God. And that in return, that is, is in return, giving God's word back unto himself. When we proclaim our testimony, all we're simply doing is echoing what God has already said in the beginning. Praise God. When we give our testimony, what we're doing is echoing what God has already declared in the very beginning. That's why testimony is important. Very, very important. If you have your Bible, turn with me to John chapter four, right? I want to read John chapter four. And and, and one thing that I like about this uh, uh, story, it's a very, very uh, long story. It's very, very intensive in his, uh, in his uh, context. But one thing I like about this story is simply this, that Jesus was at the well. Jesus wanted water from a lady who's at the well. She who was a Samaritan and Jesus being a Jew by 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 custom by, by uh, customary, it wasn't allowed for Jews and Samaritans to talk. It wasn't privileged. It wasn't it was it was frowned upon, if you will. And Jesus, who in his compassion and his love and nature, who does not care about ethnicity, who does not care about nationality, but care about very real souls. He went to proclaim the kingdom of God unto her. And he started off by talking to her. He said, give me water. And she says that, how do you come to a well without a cup? <laughs> she says, and that's a logical question to ask. How do you come to a well that you have to dig up water? You don't have a cup. And Jesus responds to her in John chapter four, verse 10. He says, if only you knew the gift of God and who asks you a, 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 a drink of water, you would have asked him for water instead. And he would have given you rivers of living water. And so Jesus was saying that and she says, oh, I perceive that you're a prophet. And she says, OK, because you're a prophet, I want to show you my religious knowledge. She says, we submit you Jews worship on this mountain. But we Samaritans, we believe that we worship on this mountain and uh, uh, that mountain and all these other things. Jesus said, hey, it, it, it comes a time when my, worship, my, my followers will not worship me here nor there, but they will watch, worship me in truth and in spirit. And so the lady sees this and ultimately at the end of it all, Jesus leads her to Christ, whom it is himself. He gives her salvation. Praise God. He gives her the, the, the very word of the Lord. And that's where I want to pick up in the Bible. And so I want you to look at um, verse 39, verse 39. Um, I want you to read this with me. It says this. It says many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. Praise God. I want you to follow along with me. I'm looking at John chapter four, verse 39. It says many of the Samaritans from the town believed in Jesus Christ because of the women of the woman, excuse me, testimony. Someone say testimony. Hallelujah. Praise God. It says many of the Samaritans from her town believed in Jesus Christ because of her own testimony. So Jesus Christ encountered her. Jesus Christ spoke a word into her life that gave her salvation, right? Romans 10 says that what? Faith comes by hearing in the hearing of the word of God. 
right? We learned in Isaiah 55, verse 10 through 11, it says that my word will go forth and it will accomplish the very thing that I have orchestrated it to be, that I have purposed for it to be. And so when Jesus Christ gave in her a word, right, in John chapter 4, verse 10, where he says that if only you knew the gift of God and who if only you knew the gift of God and if only it says, if only you knew the gift of God and who acts of you of water. See, God, Jesus authorized the word unto her very soul. And what begins to happen was that she, by faith, received that word. And what produced was a boldness on the inside of her to proclaim the very word or the very encounter that she had with the Lord Jesus Christ. And what happens is that through her encounter, through her testimony, this is what begins to happen. It says many of the Samaritan women from her own town believed in Jesus Christ because of the woman's testimony. And let's go ahead and, and then verse 40, it says, so when the Samaritan came to him, they urged him to stay with them. It says, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more came to believe. Verse 42 is very significant. It says, they said unto the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for our own selves. And we now know that this man is really the savior of the world. Praise God. So what begins to happen about testimony is that it ushers uh, 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 those who don't believe into the presence of the living God. And so if you have a testimony about how you came to know the Lord Jesus, how you came to trust in the Lord Jesus, I'm here to tell you that that is very, very important. No testimony of salvation is 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 insignificant. I want you to go and write that down. You know, you will hear people testimony of, oh, I came to God because I survived a, 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 a 30, a 30 bullets, 30 bullets were in my chest and I still survived. And now I believe, you know, that those weighty testimonies, you know, my mom was on a, she was on her deathbed, but I just prayed one time and, and, and through that, you know, she was revived and I believed in Christ. Or you were stranded in the sea. If you watch Unbroken, you were stranded in a body of ocean. And you said, Lord, if you get me out of this situation, then, 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 you know, I will serve you for the rest of my life. You hear these weighty testimonies and you compare it to yourself and you're like, wait, Jesus, I don't have these same things. I tell you the truth, right? No testimony is insignificant. No testimony is insignificant. It doesn't matter if you were in the back of your, somebody's car and you picked up a Bible and you started to believe the Lord Jesus and you were on fire for him. That is as weighty as the next man's testimony. And through your testimony, you can bring people to know, to come to encounter our Lord Jesus Christ. And when they encounter him, they will not believe no more because of your testimony, but they will believe in God for themselves because they themselves experience Jesus. And so that's why the Bible says in Revelation that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, because what begins to happen is that when you prophesy about Jesus, what begins to happen is that Jesus now has the the the, the effectual door to now minister to souls who are very, very needy. And so your testimony, someone say testimony, your testimony is very, very important. And only those that share their testimony understand the value to which they were saved. I want to say that again. Only those that, that share their testimony passionately understand the value, the magnitude of which they were saved from. You're saying, Sam, what are you saying? If you struggle with sharing your testimony, I tell you nine out of 10 that you yourself haven't came to a complete knowledge of what you've been saved from. See, because this lady, went, when she realized that Jesus Christ was Lord, she couldn't shut up about it. It's funny enough, when Jesus Christ healed 10 lepers, there was a story of Jesus Christ healing 10 lepers, right? He had healed them and he said, don't go and tell anybody about it. I want you to go and tell the high priest. I want you to go, excuse me, I want you to go tell the priest of the town. Go show yourself into the priest and share your testimony only with the priest. Only with the priest. Praise God. The Bible says out of 10, only one out of 10, right? So as they were walking, as they were walking to the priest, Jesus says, go. And as you're going to walk to the priest to proclaim that you have been healed from leprosy, it says that you will see that you will be healed from leprosy on your journey unto getting unto the synagogues. And what began to happen as they were walking into the synagogues, they seen that they were killed of their various diseases. Right. 
And the Bible notes that out of 10 of those people, only one came back and gave glory to God. The Bible records there's been so many times Jesus performed the miracles when he first started his ministry, right? Jesus performed many, many miracles and he commanded the people not to say anything. But funny enough, the people still, still in their, in their joy and their excitement, they still shared the very word of God. They still shared their testimony, irregardless of what ooh, the commandment of Jesus saying, don't, don't, don't go and share. Are you following me? I hope this is very, very clear. See, Jesus Christ ordered people when he first started his ministry because he knew that his that 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 fame or, or or popularity wasn't his portion. So at the beginning point of his ministry, he told people as he performed miracles and wonders, he says, do not go and share. Do not go and share because it is not my time yet. But people shared anyway. I'm here to tell you that if you're sharing the testimony about Jesus, only those that have an overwhelming uh, 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 revelation of what they're saved from will share their testimony about Jesus. If you're scared to evangelize, I'm here to tell you that you have not valued what Christ has done for you more than the very fear that you have. Are you following me? Many people are scared to evangelize. Many people are, are, are scared to share their faith. Right. There's a fear. Oh, they may not receive it in all these things. The thing I, I, I tell you the truth, only those that understand where they came from, hellfire, understood the, the state of where they were. Right. Only those are going to boldly profess Jesus and, and do it with effortlessly, without any problems or hesitation. But those that are fearing are, are, are now honoring their emotions over the revelation of Jesus Christ, over their own testimony of how they came to know the Lord. That's why you hear that song from Jesus called to the rooftops. From the rooftops, I proclaim that I am yours. You understand? And from a place of joy, from a place of overwhelming joy, you can't, you can't only but help. I like uh, 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 Acts chapter four, very powerful passage from Peter. He says that we can only but, we cannot help but talk about what God has done for us. He says, even if you constrain us, we can only, we can't, we can't stop the proclaiming. We can't. First John chapter one says the things that we have touched, the things that we have declared, the things that we have handled with the word of God, we share with you. There's an uncontrollable, unexpressible joy that I just must share with somebody. I tell you the truth. If you study for exam, if you study for exam, 48 hours, two days for exam. And you pass with an A. I promise you, everyone in that town will know that you got an A. Because you remember the hard work and the diligence that you had to put in to receive the grade that you got. But a lot of people don't remember the, the, the work of the Lord, where they came from, the very sin that they were engrossed in. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, that Jesus Christ was anointed by God with the power of the Holy Spirit to go around doing good works and freeing people from the bondage or the tyrant of the devil. Only those that, that has been in an oppressing grip of the devil can only proclaim and, and, and proclamate the goodness of the Lord. So your testimony, someone say testimony, is very important. And from a place of thankfulness, you are able to share your testimony. And that's how those two connect. From a place of thankfulness, right? From a place of thanksgiving, you can only but share your testimony about Jesus. The thanksgiving is very, very important. It is very, very important. It's very, very essential. I heard this quote that's very, very powerful. That thanksgiving gets the attention of the king. Very, very powerful. Thanksgiving gets the attention and the audience of the King Jesus. I want to turn to uh, Psalms 100 verse 5. Another very, very popular verse. Another verse that we all sing. They actually created a hymn song around it. Um, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for me. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. 
He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. There's something about, you know, the posture of your heart that gives a genuine sound of thanksgiving unto the Lord. It is something about the posture of your heart that gives a genuine offering of thanks unto God. I want to read uh, 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 Psalms 100, right? Verse 4. It says, enter the gates with thankfulness with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise it says give thanks to him and praise his name continuously it says for the lord is good and his love endures forever his faithfulness comes throughout all generation i tell you in order to get into the presence of god you need a spirit of thankfulness are you following me in order to get into the presence of god you need a spirit of thankfulness thankfulness if you're not thankful of what Jesus Christ has done for you, why do you expect for him to do more for you or for him to do anything for you? I want you to think about the concept of, 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 of giving thanks. It is only when a person identify that they themselves are weak, right? It's only when a person identify that they in and of themselves couldn't do the thing, but that they express their gratitude unto the person that did that thing for them. So what are you saying, Sam? Let's say that I was stranded and I needed a ride. And my brother came and picked me up. What is? What am I going to say from the bottom of my heart? Thank you. Thank you. Are you following me? When, when, when you don't have a pen and you're in a class taking a test, and that one person who always carry a Ziploc bag of pens happened to give you a pen, what do you say? Thank you. Because you realize that you were in need of something, and that person supplied your very need. Right? If someone give you a compliment, what do you say? You say, thank you. Why? Because you understood that that person didn't have to give that compliment, but in, but, 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 but them passing the barriers of uncomfortable, of, of not being comfortable to give you a, 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 a affirmation. They didn't, they didn't have to do these things. They passed the barrier of awkwardness to give you a, a compliment. And so what do you reply? And you say, thank you. See, Jesus Christ didn't have to set us free. He didn't. But it said, for freedom's sake, Christ has set us free. Are you following me? So Thanksgiving is very, very important. It is very, very essential in Christian living because without it, you cannot move, you cannot breathe, and you cannot live. I tell you the honest truth. I charge you guys, for those that are on this line, go, a, go two days. I just say two days. When let your prayer be nothing of Thanksgiving. No request before God. No, no request at all. No requests, just thankfulness. And I promise you, you will see a significant shift in your walk with God. I challenge you to do that because I myself done it. The Lord has, has, has been a time and a period of my, in my walk where I couldn't really identify what God was doing in my life. You know, I was always comparing myself to the, to my contemporaries, to people around me. And what begins to happen is I lost the spirit of thankfulness. And as I lost the spirit of thankfulness, I couldn't genuinely pray. So a lot of people say, oh, you know, my prayer life is dry. The reason why your prayer life is dry is because the spirit of thankfulness is not resting upon you. I want you to understand that. The reason why your prayer life is very, very dry. The reason why you, nine out of 10, probably sleep in your prayer in the middle of the day when you know you're fully awake or you're sleeping in your prayer is because you're so focused on yourself in your prayer. But prayer is when two hearts communicate. Prayer is a conversation. And I'll tell you the truth. If you knew that this was a conversation, you would not be on this line. Why? Because I'd be the only one person. You'd be like, when are you going to give me an opportunity to talk? But you know that this is a preaching. <laughs> Praise God. You know that this is a teaching. So therefore, you came to listen. You see? But God came to enter. God came in prayer to engage with you. He did not come just to only listen, to merely listen. Though that is one component of what he did. But he also came to communicate back unto you. And I'll tell you the truth, nobody will want to be in a conversation where they're just, where they're literally just listening to someone ramble on and on and on. See, and that's why we, we, we sleep when we pray, right? Praise God. Because all we doing are, are just focus on the things that we need and not really focusing on what God has already done for us and what he will do and what he will do for us. I, I hope you're following me. What he has done for us in times past and what he would do, uh, what he is doing in the present and what he will do in the future. So I really encourage you guys for, a, for for two days, I would say a week, but that may not be very, very practical. But I believe if you give the Holy Spirit two days, give the Holy Spirit two days 
to just pray concerning thanksgiving that it will bring a radical difference in your walk with God. There will be an internal peace and joy that, that will overwhelm in the inside of you. I know I said I finished at at, at, at um, six fifty five, but but what 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 happens sometimes is that you prepare Thanksgiving. It says, "Man, you're about four months early." Praise God. Um, and, and I know I said I finished at at, at six forty five, but the very thing is is that God is stressing the importance of Thanksgiving. God is really stressing it. God is stressing thanks to be thankful unto Him. We're not talking about Thanksgiving where you eat turkey. Praise God. We're not talking about Thanksgiving where where you where, where you begin where you begin to practice gluttony. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the Thanksgiving that is found in the very heart of of our heart. I tell you, the position and the posture of our heart determines the answer prayers that we receive. You're saying, Sam, how true is that? The Bible says in First John chapter five, it says, "Have confidence in that that whatever we pray for." Right. It says, if it is according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, he answers us. So what that means is that if my heart is in the alignment with the will of God, which is to always be thankful in all things. First Thessalonians should be thankful in all things. Right. What begins to happen is that my prayer now is to be, it conforms to the will of God. And when, when it conforms, that means that every prayer is answered. It's a yes and an amen. God can't say amen to selfish prayers, believe it or not. And what begins to happen is a lot of times we're like, God, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that, and all these things. And then we don't see the result of it and we get mad at God. Like, God, I thought you were a genie. I thought that if I rub you or, you know, if I rub the lamp, then I'll receive. Or I thought that if I just get on my knees and pray that I'll receive. No, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 that you have, he only gives according to his will. He only gives according to his will. And thanksgiving will give you a new perspective on the will of God concerning your life. I challenge you two days, two days. I want you to go two days with giving thanks unto the Lord and see, see the internal difference that you have. Perspective will change. I'll tell you the truth. See, God had to wake me up to this revelation that thanksgiving actually give birth to the things that you actually need from God. I tell you, if you're thankful for the things that you don't have, God will give you those things. I tell you, if you are, are thankful for the things that you do have, God will increase the things that you have. That's what the principle says, that he that is faithful in little is faithful in very, very much. And so we're going to actually end and we're going to actually exercise thankfulness, being thankful unto God. And, and, and one thing I want to exercise about testimony or one thing I want to illustrate, excuse me, about having a, a, a testimony and also having the spirit of thankfulness is that these things require you to be very, very specific. Someone say specific. See, it is not good enough to say, Lord, I'm thankful for everything that you have given me. Amen. See, a lot of times we can praise God through the, uh, 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 or we can thank God through the form of, 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 of songs and renditions of songs, right? But a lot of times we can't thank God from the very uh, 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 heart that we have. Are you following me? Does that make sense? When I ask you to begin to thank God, you will hear people rambling on and on about the same phraseology that they've been saying. Lord, thank you, God. Lord, I just thank you. Lord, I thank you. For a, a 10 minute prayer would be, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. That's not, that's not good enough. You have to be very, very specific. What are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? What are you personally thankful for? I tell you the truth. The more specific you get, the more your heart is tender towards the things of God. Lord, I'm thankful that I am alive. Not only that I'm alive, but I am well and I'm actually very, very functional. It's a big difference because you can be alive and you can be very, very miserable. Is it not true? But when you now make it more specific, Lord, I'm thankful that, that, that I am well. I'm thankful that I am abounding in the, in the grace and the mercy of God. What begins to happen is your heart begins to uh, become tender and you get a, actually a new perspective on the life that you have. Praise God. And so now I just want to take time to just give thanks unto the Lord. I told you that it'd be very short. Praise God. So let's just go ahead and lift up our voices wherever you are. I just want you to begin to specifically, just specifically communicate unto God exactly what you're thankful for. 
Praise God. I just want you to be, if you're thankful that, that you're saved, that in and of itself is a big thanks offering unto God. I want you just to communicate that to the Lord. You know, if you're thankful that your family members know the Lord Jesus, that is something to be thankful for. If, you, if you're thankful that God is giving you a job without you having to be worried and stressed about it, I want you to really communicate that to God. If, if, if you know academics come easy for you, if you know that you do not have to study and you still get A's on your exam, I want you to be thankful for unto God. If, if you're a type of person that only applied to a job once and they always interview you and you always get the job, I just want you to begin to exercise your thanks unto God by saying, Lord, thank you. Yeah. So let us just begin to pray. Lord, we say thank you, God. From the bottom of our heart, Lord, we worship your name, God, that you have divinely orchestrated, God, that you have divinely appointed us to be on Periscope, Lord, that we may be encouraged in this little time frame, God, Father, to learn, oh God, about the about the importance of thanksgiving, oh Lord. Father, we thank you, oh God, because our heart, oh God, was inclined to hear the message, oh God, that had to come forth, oh God, concerning our testimony, oh God. Lord, I say thank you that we have a testimony, Lord, for not many people have a testimony of coming to trust the Lord Jesus. But God, we have a revelation of your love, God. Lord, I say thank you, God, that we have the opportunity to even witness what is going on on Periscope, God. Father, for we see over the face of the earth, God, that many people's lives are just been taken, oh God, at, at, at unexpect, unexpectancy, Lord. But Father, we say thankful. We're, we're thankful for the very gift of life that we have, oh God. Lord, we say thank you, God, that our mouth is still able to proclaim your name. We say Say thank you that our brain is still wired to, to, to think about and to meditate upon the things of the scriptures. Lord, we say thankful. We're thankful, God. Lord, we say that unto you, O oh God, be the dominion, the power, and glory, O oh God. Lord, we say thank you, God, because through you, God, the spirit of wisdom and revelation rests upon us, O oh God. Lord, we say thankful, God, that we will, O oh God, will move forth in, in a spirit of thankfulness, O oh God. Lord, we say thank you that you have given us your spirit without limits, O oh God. Lord, we say thank you, God, that in a, in a, in a world, oh God, where things are not safe, God, you cause us to be safe, oh God. Yes, Lord, Father, in a, in a, in a, in a generation, oh God, where nick, oh, wickedness abound, oh God, Father, you have snatched us out of that wickedness, oh God, to live a life of righteousness, oh God. Lord, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you, oh God, because all things are made possible. Lord, we say thank you for trials and tribulations. Yes, Lord. God, we say we are joyful, God, for the trials and uh, tribulations that we suffer. God, the Bible says in James chapter one, it says, brethren, count it joy when you go through trials and tribulation, because it, it is the producing. It is the refining uh, refinement of your faith. Lord, we say thank you, God. We say thank you, God, because you have counted us worthy to go through persecution for your name's sake. Lord, we say thank you, God, because of the minute trials will produce, oh God, the maturity inside of us. Lord, we say thank you for the chastisement and the rebuke and the dis, uh, and the, uh, 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 the reproof that you have given unto us, oh God, because through that maturity will occur in our spirit. Lord, we say thank you, God. We bless your name for this time spent with you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So bless you guys. I encourage you um, as we're tuning off now. I really encourage you guys that Thanksgiving that you that you focus on Thanksgiving for the next two days. I encourage you. It's really a lifetime thing. But me as a teacher, I can only begin to walk you like building blocks. I can only lay foundations. And the practical aspect of it is for you to go two days. I challenge yourself. The Bible says, pick up your cross and deny yourself. I tell you the truth. I even in a time where you're like, Lord, I want to pray for myself. I just just be like, but I, I, I submit myself unto you right now. And I just want to give you thanks in all things. The Bible says that Paul and Silas was in the jail cell. Paul and Silas, I want to end there. Paul and Silas was in the jail cell. But they choose to give thanks unto God rather than to pray that God will release them from jail. I want you to understand that very revelation. Paul and Silas was in jail. See, Paul could have simply prayed, Lord, get us out of jail so we can continue to preach the gospel. But he did not pray that prayer. He gave thanks unto the Lord. And what happened was that the jail cell broke. And when the jail cell broke, actually, they won somebody over to the Lord because of their thanksgiving unto God. And so I want to encourage you guys that through Thanksgiving, I tell you that the kingdom of heaven will be manifested unto you because only those 
that that are that that see the hand of God in their life are truly genuinely thankful. Just like the lady at the well, she came to know the Lord Jesus, and because she seen Jesus for who he was and who he is, it produced a heart of thankfulness, which ultimately looks like testimony. Praise God by giving your testimony. So I encourage you guys um, to really, really endeavor these two days. I encourage you to have the spirit of thankfulness, the attitude of gratitude, if you will. And watch the Lord move on your behalf. So I want to say thank you, brethren, for calling in. The Lord bless you and keep you. And we'll see you tomorrow. In Jesus' precious name, we have fellowship. Amen. So God bless you guys. God bless you all. Bye.